All right, well, that was actually a great introduction to my talk. I'm going to be talking, um, obviously, very briefly about the future of seismogeodesy and how the combination of seismic and geodetic data set can help improve early warning, specifically through rapid magnitude estimation. So magnitude is um, completely important for early warning, especially for tsunami early warning. In fact, in Japan, it's the only metric that's used to issue an evacuation warning. And in the case of the Tohokuoki earthquake, severe magnitude underestimation really hampered the uh, rapid response efforts. And that's because Japan's early warning uh, is dependent on seismic instrumentation. And the relation between magnitude and ground displacement measured by seismic instruments saturates for large events. We can do better with GPS. So um, here's an example of rapid magnitude estimation with GPS only. Um, you can see that for large magnitude events, there is no saturation using peak ground displacement. But peak ground displacement can happen minutes after uh, the event if um, for long rupture durations. So instead, we use a seismogeodetic approach, which combines low frequency information from GNSS with the high frequency information from co-located strong motion sensors to obtain broadband displacements and velocities in the near field in real time and without user input. So here's an example of the promise for magnitude estimation with seismogeodesy. Um, on the right, you see that the relationship between magnitude and strong and peak P wave displacement measured by strong motion saturates. But here, there's um, evidence that we can use a displacement measured from seismogeodesy to estimate magnitude without uh, saturation. So magnitude is especially uh, suited because we can also get the hypocentral distance, which is the second item that we need to do rapid magnitude scaling. And we do this by using a seismogenic velocity to do automated P wave detection. Um, and this is just a simple STA LTA algorithm that um, many people use. So the current West Coast seismogenetic coverage includes 40 co-located stations in Cascadia, 19 in the Bay Area, and 26 in Southern California. And I'm going to zoom in in a moment on Southern California to describe how the network configuration affects our ability to resolve hypocenter by inverting for, with these automated P wave arrivals. So here's a synthetic test of hypocenter location resolution. Um, for a grid of potential hypocenter locations, I've created synthetic P wave arrival times, added error based on our typical P wave pick errors, and then re-inverted for hypocenter. So the line length um, is, corresponds to the error that we see. So short is good, long is bad. I've done this many times for different, um, to get different error simulations. And this is sort of what you get from all of those um, events. So uh, light and yellow is good, dark and red is bad. So you see that there are areas within the network where we can constrain the hypocenter very well, and areas like the Gulf of California, where we can't do well at all. But if we add this one seismogenetic station, it's currently an existing GNSS station um, in Arizona, P001, suddenly we can do a lot better in the Gulf of California. So we can, um, if we can upgrade that one station, that would really help our efforts. Um, and we can do the same thing in Cascadia. This is arguably uh, more difficult to constrain the hypocenter because it's a subduction zone. We only have instruments on one side of uh, the fault. And um, there's the risk of tsunami. So here we have two areas that we don't do that well. If we add stations, we can add one in Northern California, and we need to add a bunch in um, Vancouver. But we could do much better with that. So how do we add all of these uh, seismogenetic stations without blowing our budgets? Um, so we propose that we use these inexpensive strong motion MEMS accelerometers in combination with the existing high rate GNSS uh, um, stations and use that in our seismogenetic approach. And we actually have evidence that um, this, will, this will work because we've started to install these um, inexpensive SIO MEMS accelerometer packages. We have about 10 stations operating in the Bay Area and 16 in Southern California. And now we've just been waiting for an earthquake to happen to see how it does. We haven't gotten any big earthquakes, but we have gotten a magnitude four. Um, and we can see that uh, we can pick out a P wave for this magnitude four event for stations um, up to about 15 kilometers away from the epicenter. We can get the S wave even further than that. So we're pretty confident that we'll be able to do well when an earthquake of magnitude of importance for early warning comes along. Um, and if you're looking for details about that, we have um, a forthcoming paper by Saunders et al. from our group that's going to be um, coming out soon. So in conclusion, seismogeodesy is particularly well suited for rapid magnitude estimation. The SIO MEMS accelerometer is sufficient for seismogeodesy, but we certainly need more upgrades to help the resolution of our network. 
Um, so we'll look forward to that. Thank you so much.